Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Bienvenidos. Tenemos uh, traductores. We have interpreters. So if anyone wants to hear the meeting in other languages, tenemos traductores aquí en esta esquina. Si alguien quiere escuchar la reunión en su idioma, por favor, acérquese para los audífonos. Uh, so if you would like to hear the meeting in another language, please get some headsets so that we can do that. Um, let's see. Tonight is the first two nights that we have set aside to hear from the community on the Capital Improvements Program, CIP. Tonight's hearing will also be broadcast live on television and MCPS media. As always, board members are looking forward to hearing and thoughtfully considering your input as we prepare to review and take action on the CIP. Before we begin, I will ask my fellow board members to introduce themselves. And Dr. Felder is also joining us this evening, and we have several MCPS, member, MCPS staff members joining us in person. So I'll start with my board member colleagues. Good evening, Julie Yang, District 3. I'm very happy to see all of you here tonight. Good evening, Rebecca Smondrowski, District 2. Thank you all for coming. Good evening, everyone. Lynn Harris, I use she, her pronouns. I'm an at-large member of the board. I'm really looking forward to hearing your, your testimony this evening. And online. Good afternoon, Brenda Wolf, District 5. Glad to see everyone this evening. You're on mute. You're mute. I mute yourself, Ms. Rivera Oven. I'm very sorry. Good evening, Buenas tardes, Grace Rivera Oven, District 1. Okay. Uh, Dr. Felder, if you'd like to introduce your sure. team. Sure, would love to. So uh, good evening, everyone. Monique Felder, interim superintendent. I am very grateful to be here and looking forward to hearing your input uh, tonight. And joining me is? Good evening, Brian Hall, Chief Operating Officer. Let's go down the line to yeah, hear everybody's exactly. hey, Good evening, Seth Adams, Associate Superintendent for Office of Facilities Management. Adrian Karamihas, Director of Capital Planning and Real Estate. Stephanie Sharon, Chief of Strategic Initiatives. Good evening, Peter Moran, Acting Chief of Schools. Good evening, Peggy Pugh, Chief Academic Officer. Good evening, Diana Wiles, Associate Superintendent, Office of Special Education. Okay, thank you all for being here. Um, they hear your input as well uh, and assist the superintendent with follow-up. The order of speakers is listed on the agenda that is available on the board's website. Board members will have the opportunity to hear from the community via in-person testimony or by audio or video presentations. Written testimony of those who signed up for tonight's hearing has been made available to the public and for board members to review on our website through board docs. The board's next hearing on the CIP will be held at 6 p.m. on Thursday, March 14th, 2024. The board will then take action on two boundary study scopes as well as capital project scopes on Thursday, March 19th, 2024, during the board's regularly scheduled board meeting. Let's begin with our speakers who are here in person. When your name is called, please approach the podium push the flat button below the microphone to turn it on and begin speaking. Please speak clearly and directly into the microphone and please stay within your time allotment so that we can hear from everyone. So the, our first speaker, we always have our students, uh, uh, excuse me, our elected officials come first. So we have Monique Ashton, mayor of the city of Rockville. Good evening, everyone. Uh, President Sylvester, members of the board, Dr. Felder, and staff. My name is Monique Ashton, Mayor of Rockville, and I'm so excited to see so many Wooten folks here today. I want to uh, take the time to say I, I'm sorry that you're in the position of even having to talk about reductions, and to tell you that I did go and advocate to the county council as well, because I'm sure that's what you'll be thinking. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the mayor and council thank the Board of Education for your leadership to bring essential capital improvement projects to our schools. We are aware that there are some significant reductions that may be proposed and that the county has asked you to come back with some reductions. We are concerned with some of the items, and of course I have to speak up for Rockville Schools. We are concerned that Twinbrook Elementary is a major capital project listed on the non-recommended reduction list. We have strongly advocated for Twinbrook. I was there this past week, uh, the past two weeks, and will continue to advocate for them. 
please do not remove FY25's appropriation requests for planning funds, and please do not delay construction by two years. This is in school that we see as an important part of addressing equity in our community. It is a building that was constructed in 1952. It's not ADA compliant. It lacks decent space for specialists to provide individualized support for students. And there, there's some intractable problems like lack of fire suppression, sprinklers, impeded sight lines, a lot of things that we know that other schools have that they don't. We also want to make sure that uh, and appreciate that Crown High School is not recommended for any delays at this time, only a technical adjustment made. But we do want to, as you have to make tough decisions, ensure that this project also remains on schedule. Richard Montgomery's high school overcrowding continues and is projected to have a capacity deficit of 342 seats. And Gaithersburg High School also has a 145 seat deficit. The, the city of Rothwell has been trying to help them grapple with things like needing more bike racks and trying to find parking. Um, so we're trying from our city's perspective, but there's only so much we can do, and we need to make sure that crown goes through. We're also exceedingly concerned about Wooten High School's major capital project, that it's included in the potential reductions list. We know that, as you will hear tonight, the community is dismayed that this project has been delayed for so many years while others have jumped ahead. And we are constantly hearing from the school leadership, cluster leaders, as well as students about their concerns. The deteriorated state of the buildings place a significant health and safety concerns for students, teachers, and staff. The HVAC systems are in disrepair. There are leaking roof and pipes, dilapidated bathrooms. And I do appreciate that you're trying to do some short-term things in terms of ADA safety and addressing the bus pickup, so I want to acknowledge that. The Wooten High School renovation project was first included for the CIP in 2009. We're now, 20 years later, still talking about the renovation. We're concerned that the project could be delayed for many years beyond, and we want to stop that. Please move forward with this project. In addition, I was at Metal Hall and directly observed some security concerns at the front of their building. They have glass doors, and there's a gap at the bottom of those doors. That is not a long-term need. That is something I'm hoping that, as speaking today, that someone can go and check that out. Um, they really need to ensure that the, bu the building is safe and secure. Thank you for all that you do on behalf of our children. I know that this is not an easy job. I know that we all wish we had more resources, but I feel compelled to advocate for our Rockville schools, and I appreciate your time and attention. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kyle Lee. Please come forward. OK, hello. Good evening, members of the Board of Education. My name is Kyle Lee. I'm a sophomore at Wooden High School, and I've lived in Montgomery County for my whole life. I'm here to represent my experience as a Wooden High School student in relation to the current state of the school building. Wooden has never undergone any major renovations in the past 50 years, and because of this, it has been to seriously deteriorate. Firstly, the air conditioning system is broken. Some rooms are extremely hot, while others are extremely cold. This makes it incredibly hard for students to correctly prepare the appropriate clothing to maximize their learning experience. Additionally, the general state of the building has been slowly worn down from years of use, from ripped out sinks, holes in the ceiling, exposed piping, and broken bathroom locks, Wuhan is in evident need of renovation. It is my firm belief that the most important purpose of a school building is to foster an, an ideal learning environment for its students. And as it stands now, the Wuhan building provides no such benefits. The plethora of problems stemming from the building distract students from being able to fully focus on school. I am not even able to use the bathroom comfortably because of the many broken bathroom locks and toilet seats. I'm sure many other students can testify to more issues with the building. But please, I ask that you consider major renovations of Wuhan High School. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ashley Stanislaus. Please come forward. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Felder. My name is Ashi Stanislaus, and I'm a junior and the SGA secretary at Thomas S. Wooten High School. After testifying multiple times at the board and at county council about Wooten's infrastructure and its hazardous conditions, it was very disheartening to hear about the possibility of the renovation date being pushed back. 
I am here and I will continue to show up and advocate until these urgent needs are met. Education is a human right that everyone should have safe access to. In the United States, it's a state's responsibility to guarantee that this right is filled. The fact of the matter is that Wooten is not ADA compliant. When the Americans with Disabilities Act ADA was signed into law, it established the civil right of people with disabilities to live, work, and fully participate in their communities. Public schools are one of America's most prominent public entities, so they are obligated to adhere to basic ADA requirements. Last semester, our school had two bomb threats in less than two months. During our first bomb threat, the special education department needed to be evacuated before everyone else because the exit path for students is not accessible. During the second evacuation, there was no warning. So they had to evacuate at the same time as everyone else. The route from their classroom to the field is unsafe and hazardous. In the SEB program, there are currently... Thank you. Just a reminder, three minutes for students, is that correct? Okay. Okay, I apologize, but uh, we have our timekeeper over there. Our next speaker is Emma Yuan. Please come forward. So just to clarify, I have three minutes. Okay. Um, good evening, Dr. Felder and members of the Board of Education. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emma Yuan, and I'm a junior at Wuhan High School. I come before you guys once again to advocate for the necessary funding for the renovation of our school building. Despite receiving certain enhancements over the years, such as the additions in front of our school building, as well as the upcoming ADA improvements, the overarching need for a full renovation remains unaddressed. Wooten High School stands as one of the few high schools that have not had any significant renovation since its construction over 50 years ago in 1970. While we appreciate the incremental improvements, they only serve as temporary solutions to deeper rooted issues within our aging infrastructure. Imagine our school as a boat, aging year after year, cherished but developing countless leaks. Each patch applied re represents a fleeting remedy, failing to solve the underlying issues. The idea of further delays, or even worse, cancellation of our renovation project is alarming. Despite our persistent advocacy efforts, a multitude of pressing issues persist. My friends have told me about mold in their classrooms, often so bad the infested tiles had to be ripped out of the ceilings. We have also had multiple gas leaks within the span of a few weeks, and not to mention our outdated HVAC system that causes extreme temperatures in classrooms. This past Tuesday, March 5th, we even had a flooding incident which closed down an entire section of our first floor. Moreover, there are also accessibility challenges, such as those to wheelchair-bound students unable to access essential facilities like the auditorium, filled with rows of broken seats, which are unacceptable in a modern educational environment. Furthermore, outdated equipment in programs like TV production poses a challenge for students who are trying to gain skills relevant for today's media industry. Health concerns arising from substandard facilities and the lack of infrastructure to support modern educational technology compromise the ability to provide equal opportunities to all students. I ask you to prioritize funding for the renovation of Wuhan High School in the Capital Improvement Project budget. Investing in our school's infrastructure is a commitment to the well-being and educational advancement of current and future generations of students and staff and teachers alike. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kena Coley. Good evening, Dr. Felder and members of the board. My name is Yana Cooley, and I'm a junior at Thomas S. Wooten High School and a member of Wooten SGA. I'm here today to once again advocate that the renovation of our school does not get pushed back or canceled. I can, I can firmly argue that anyone who steps into our building would agree that Wooten's renovation is imperative. This renovation is not simply a want. It is a need to keep students safe. Throughout my time at Wuhan, I've experienced a numerous amount of highly concerning mishaps, such as pipe bursts, mold in the ceilings, falling light fixtures, and leaking water, all of which should deem our school's importance for renovation. 
However, within these past few months, these concerns have become exceedingly worse. For one, our school has had multiple bomb threats, and the evacuation process was frightful. The special education program educators were struggling to pull students to safety because of the alarmingly steep sidewalks, the difficult route to reach exits, the step down from an exit, and extremely heavy doors. All of these made it impossible for the special education team to hold the door and push students in wheelchairs, all while over 1,800 students were trying to get out as well. It is unfair that we have an amazing special education program, but, they lack the, but students lack the ability to safely enter and exit the school. We shouldn't have to worry if our safety is going to be compromised on an everyday basis. Our school prides itself on equity, but this is not equity. I've experienced firsthand the struggle of getting around Wooten, having been in a boot for a month, and part of that time I was also in crutches. Out of the two elevators on the first and second floor, one of them is bound to be broken, and the location of the elevators also doesn't make them easy to reach. Furthermore, in order to get into the school, I am forced to choose between a steep sidewalk, a steep ramp, or stairs. I don't feel safe. The consistent everyday problems on top of the lack of ADA compliance makes it a difficult environment to be in. I am aware there is an ADA project at work right now, but that is not enough to fix all the other existing problems. Earlier this week, we had a pipe burst in a classroom and water was flooding the hallways, causing relocation of students and staff, leading to loss of education time. How is this not enough to prove our school needs this renovation? <coughs> Students and staff shouldn't have to face this many barriers in a place where they come to learn and teach. It is shocking and disappointing. I'm not asking to have a fancy new school. I'm asking for a necessary change to comply with basic student needs and safety. I ask to please keep our renovation date as it is, as this is an urgent matter left in your hands. It is time to stop pushing our school aside. It is time to recognize these problems and take action. Please take into consideration all the reasons above and give your attention and effort to make Wooten a priority. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Madeline Egg. Please come forward. And you're on. Good evening, Dr. Felder and members of the board. My name is Madeline Egg, and I am a junior at Wooten High School as well as the current SGA historian. Today, I would like to address the hazardous state of our building, where 1,840 students come to learn every day and implore you to consider and maintain our scheduled renovation date. I'm very disappointed to be back and advocating for the same necessary building improvements as last year and the year before. As both a leader and a student, I firmly believe that everyone has the right to be kept out of danger in school, especially in the case of an emergency. We should feel comfortable in our learning environment, but Wooten's infrastructure regretfully falls short of ADA compliance standards, becoming particularly evident in our emergency evacuations. Over the course of the past four months, we have had two bomb threats that allowed me to visualize the risk we take by simply showing up to school. During these bomb threats, teachers and students alike had no idea what was going on as we rushed outside. Though evacuating may seem like an easy task, it took upwards of 15 minutes during both events. How, you might ask? The infrastructure is failing us. Hundreds of students were led to the same evacuation doors and got piled behind our special education department, which was unable to evacuate quickly due to the physical barriers that break ADA compliance. After facing the initial challenge of getting students outside, I watched a boy in front of me fall on an uneven path due to the swarm of students pushing into him, and it became abundantly clear that the evacuation routes are simply unsafe. Small doorways, tight hallways, and cramped staircases are examples of the structural concerns that are far beyond a simple fix or inconvenience convenience as they transform into safety hazards during emergencies. During these evacuations, our biggest worry should be quickly exiting the building, not wondering if the ADA violations prevent us from getting to safety. While I appreciate that the ADA correction process has begun, I ask that you expedite the process and provide the funding for basic necessities for students. I'm so disappointed to hear that the infrastructure issues that are so prevalent are getting put on the back burner, and I am concerned not only for the safety of current students, but the thousands more who will experience worse conditions if MCPS pushes the date back. In addition, staff members should have the right to fully focus on teaching and not constantly worry about their safety being compromised by the crumbling building, mold exposure, or flooding. I ask that you keep the date where it is, as I worry that 2029 is already too far away for Wooten students to endure the current environment. Rebuilding would allow us to create a school environment that not only meets ADA standards, but allows students to feel connect content with their safety. 
Through this, we can ensure a standard that prioritizes the well-being, safety, and success of everyone who enters the building. While I understand that I will never be a student at the renovated school, I hope that the students to come will never have the same worries that we do today. Thank you for your time. I look forward to collaborating in the future to create solutions that prioritize students, staff, and the school system. Thank you. Our next speaker is Claire Lincoln. Please come forward. Good evening. You're good. Nope, oh, try yeah. Good evening, Dr. Felder and members of the board. My name is Claire Lincoln, and I am a member of Montgomery County's Regional SGA, but more importantly, I am a junior at Wooten High School. Every morning, I walk into school and am consistently appalled by the conditions that I and my peers must face. Whether it is missing ceiling panels in my first period, the rusty metal rods on the wall in my math class, or the frequent leaks whenever it rains, our school is neither safe or healthy. Crucially, it is in no way ADA compliant. Since the ADA's passing 34 years ago, our school has only fallen into more disrepair. There are over 300 violations present in our school, which is 300 more than is acceptable. Every day, I see my fellow students struggle to navigate our school. When I had friends who were on crutches, I saw that they were forced to crutch all the way across our school just to find one of our two elevators. Even for students without mobility issues, the jam-packed hallways and uneven pathways make it close to impossible to get through a day without tripping or falling in some way. In the past year, we have also had two bomb threats that caused our school to be evacuated. While I wish I could say that these went smoothly, they were filled with unnecessary chaos. Instead of getting to our safe locations in an orderly manner, hundreds of students were pushed and shoved through small doors and forced to go on unsafe walking paths. The lack of ramps and uneven pa pavements also provide an extra challenge for all my peers with mobility issues. Even as recently as this past Tuesday, March 5th, I left my first period to see students running to see the flood that our school is experiencing. A pipe had burst, causing water to flood one part of our school and shut it down for the majority of the day. As every day passes, it becomes more important that the board stops delaying our renovations because we are in dire need of them. Incidents like this will only become more common if they are left unfixed. While we appreciate the start that has been made to make corrections to our school, I ask that the, the renovation date stops being delayed for the safety and health of all the students, staff, and members of the Wooten community. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Leah Weinstein. Please come forward. Good evening, Dr. Felder and members of the board. My name is Leah Weinstein, and I am a junior at Thomas S. Wooten High School. I'm here today to discuss why a renovation for our school is necessary and why it should not be postponed. I'm a firm believer that an updated and renovated school is necessary for students to achieve their academic expectations. However, our school is the opposite right now. Every day, I walk into a school that is falling apart in every possible way, yet to us, this is a normal occurrence. Every Wooten student knows the feeling of walking around the school, which has several missing tiles, broken lights, while simultaneously trying to dodge the leaks that come from the ceilings. It is also not an uncommon sight or occurrence to see the pipes in the ceilings or walk into a bathroom where the sinks are broken, ripped out, or don't work. Currently, our school has 215 Priority One ADA violations. As a student at this school, I believe that this many violations makes for an uncomfortable learning environment. For example, there are broken ceiling panels that leak water onto the floors, broken AC and heating systems in most classrooms, and not functional elevators. These are just some of the issues that we experience every day, making it difficult to learn. On March 5th, 2024, a water pipe burst, leaving over 10 classrooms inaccessible to students, forcing them to relocate while maintenance staff fixed the issue temporarily. However, the relocation made it hard for students to effectively get to classes in a timely manner. It also became a struggle to get kids in wheelchairs or on crutches out of the rooms and through our very crowded hallways. In addition, during our two bomb threat evacuations, the full evacuation, including our special education department, took about 30 minutes. 
Students that were unable to walk were either forced to use the elevator or had their friends carry them down the stairs and were out significantly later than the rest of the student body because of these ADA violations. I personally had to carry my friend down the stairs a day before I had knee surgery myself. The elevators in the school break often, leaving kids who need them unable to quickly make it to class. On several occasions, I myself was late to class due to not being able to use the elevator closest to my class, therefore having to walk across the school twice. My mobility issues were only temporary. However, many kids at our school have permanent mobility issues. The school is not accessible for these kids in more ways than one. Overall, the school is in dire need of renovations because of the issues it brings during stressful situations, uncomfortable learning environments, and added stress to faculty, administrators, and students. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Youssef Qadir. Please come forward. The mic is on. You can begin. Hello, members of the community. I'm here again to address the pressing issues facing Thomas Spring Wooden High School. Every day we encounter challenges, whether it's the lack of space in the cafeteria or the deteriorating conditions of the lockers used by students. My name is Yusuf Kader, and as a freshman at Thomas S. Wooden High School, I'm deeply concerned about the state of our school. Despite being one of the top schools in the state, Wooden has been neglected for far too long. How can we expect to maintain our reputation and support our students' success without necessary resources. To put this in sp perspective, Wooden ranks in, top, in the top 1% of high schools nationwide, yet significant renovations have yet to occur in almost 21 years, with the last major renovation going back to its construction in 1970. Just knowing Wooden was originally planned to be renovated was almost 14 years ago. Why is why is the county investing in unnecessary new schools when we clearly need to renovate Wooden? By renovating Wooden, we can increase our capacity and provide a better learning environment for our students. It's disheartening to hear that my mother, who attended the, a high school almost 30 years ago, remarks that Wooden looks just like her old school. Imagine being a sixth grader in middle school right now, knowing the timeline for Wooden's full renovation will be completed in your junior year. By that time period, you will be able to drive. On March 5th, a flooding happened, closing the, an area on the first floor. Just know one of the rooms that was flooded is still being dried off. One of Wooden's most critical issues is the traffic on Wooden Parkway. Every morning between 7.20 and 7.40, it becomes nearly impossible to navigate the area effectively due to the influx of traffic from parents dropping off children. This poses a safety hazard for students and high highlights the need for a new school with an improved infrastructure. We need a new school not only for the safety of our students, but also to provide them with better quality equipment, faculties, and faculties. Though I'm, I may not personally benefit from this renovation, I urge you to consider the future generations, including my three younger siblings who deserve access to a modern, well-equipped high school. Imagine the possibilities of a brand new school could offer with the state of our technology and limitless opportunities. Thank you for your time. I hope I've influenced your decision by prioritizing the renovation of Thomas S. High School. Thank you. Our next speaker is Siona Okeke. Please come forward. Good evening, Dr. Felder and members of the board. I thank you for taking the time to listen to our concerns tonight. My name is Kamsiano Keke, and I'm a senior at Thomas S. Wooten High School, as well as Wooten's Blackson Union President, Minority Scholars Program, Wooten Cluster Chapter Head, and a SGA representative. I'm here testifying tonight because I would like to bring more attention to the state of our school building. As a senior, I spent almost three years attending Wooten. I have been accustomed to the cracked ceilings, the broken faucets, and an infrastructural mishap ever so often. But once I heard that the date was in jeopardy of being moved back again, after promises of not doing so, I knew I had to speak up. The state of our building reflects poorly on both our school and the county. One prime example of this, which occurred just two days ago, is a pipe bursting and flooding our lecture hall and hallways. This caused several classes to be crammed into the library and career center throughout the day. 
Students and staff were understandably frustrated, and building service staff were embarrassed by something that was out of their control. As I watched them tirelessly sweep the leaking water into the courtyard, I couldn't help but think of the negative connotation situations like this bring over Wooten and suggestion that those in charge of Montgomery County Public Schools do not care enough to make a change. This can, con this can discourage students and staff from being uplifted in their own school environment. Usually, I would chalk this up to just another day at Wooten. But this year hits differently for me because my little sister is now a freshman at my school. And even though my youngest sister is still in, is still in elementary school, she is also on track to graduate from Wooten as well. I fear for the problems they may face after I go. Fixing the little things like bathroom stalls and non-functional water fountains does not address the poor and aging infrastructure at our school. We come back and we plead year after year to give students after us a better school life. Yet a band-aid is placed over the wound again and again. Therefore, I'm not coming forward on my own behalf, but instead on the behalf of my younger siblings and many more students who may be forced to endure their high school years in a broken down building. I urge you to stop history from repeating itself much longer than it has to. I urge you to take action and care for the students and staff within your own county. I encourage you to stop pushing back Wuhan High School's renovation date. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jilly Nalibotsky. Please come forward. Good evening, members of the board and Dr. Felder. My name is Jilly Nalibotsky, and I am a sophomore at Wooten High School. I'm a member of the Wooten Student Government Association and our school's Best Buddies Program Vice President, which allows me to work very closely with our school's special education program, students, and staff. I recently testified through a video testimony at the CIP hearing in November, which highlighted countless hazardous conditions around my school. Throughout my years at Wooten so far, I have created numerous relationships with students in both the autism program and the school community-based program, also known as SCB. I have come to encounter firsthand the challenges of the various safety hazards around our building, making our school not ADA compliant. Access to education is a fundamental human entitlement that should be attainable to all individuals. The implementation of the Americans with Disabilities Act upon its signing into law affirmed the obligation to address any structural barriers that would in any way interfere with the participation of individuals with disabilities. While this obligation is taken into consideration and is prioritized throughout a considerable amount of Montgomery County public schools, Wooten is certainly not one of them. Writing this testimony is difficult as there is so much I could share about the unfair and illegal conditions our school upholds, but here are just a few of them. For one, there are numerous complications in simply getting around our school. With the barriers of uneven pavement, extremely steep ramps, heavy doors, tight-knit classrooms, and many other unsafe conditions, students in wheelchairs aren't able to experience a school environment like other students are, as they must adapt to the unfair circumstances. Both teachers and students must adjust to the immoral environment, but wouldn't it make more sense for the school to adapt to every person entering the building, especially students? As mentioned, this year we have had two emergency evacuations due to bomb threats in the span of two months. During the first bomb threat, special education students and staff were warned about 15 minutes ahead of time to head outside. This was crucial as it took them double time to get to a safe enough location because of our conditions. However, during the second bomb threat, they were advised to leave at the exact same time as the rest of the Wooten student body. After hearing my friends share stories about how when they were evacuating, they saw special education students and staff struggling to get through the doorways, this frightened me. These students who are struggling to get to a safe location are my friends who I care so much about. I understand that this topic is brought up often. Still, I urge you to consider taking a closer look at the deficiencies in Wooten's building regarding ADA compliance as the plans for temporary fixes will not be able to target the deep-rooted issues. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Our next uh, testimony is via video, Robin Danalo and Jordana Nivalo. Please play the video. Hello, my name is Robin Danalo, and I'm a parent of four children. All four of my children are currently in or have completed schooling in Montgomery County in the Thomas Wooten Cluster. 
I have a child in elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. I was also a previous first and second grade teacher of Montgomery County. I'm here to testify about the extreme mold that has taken over Thomas Wooten High School. I know the ins and outs of numerous schools throughout the county. In my experience, I've never witnessed the amount of mold in any other building in comparison to Wooten. Not only is it hidden, it has leaked through to numerous multiple parts of the school building in which it is clearly visible to one's eye. Growing up in Montgomery County and being an educator in the system, I always wanted my children to go to one of the W schools. I never thought of it as an issue which area to move to because it was always in the plans to renovate all W schools, including Thomas Wooten High School. As my oldest child attended Wooten, she became ill with an autoimmune disease. Almost every time she went into Wooten, she was triggered and flared up by the mold in the school. She missed over two years of in-person schooling and had to go on to IIS because the building was unsafe for her to be educated in. I have a current 11th grade student at Wooten High School who struggles similarly and has been also diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. The World Health Organization estimates that indoor air pollution causes 4.3 million deaths per year worldwide. In the United States, poor indoor air quality is responsible for an estimated 21% of asthma cases and 25 million missed school or work days each year. Montgomery County has rolled out a huge call for students to be present in school, yet many kids must stay home because of illness. What they're not realizing is the amount of children that have to miss school at Wooten because of mold triggering their bodies and causing them to become ill. I witness this almost daily firsthand and I'm utterly ashamed at the county for allowing children to spend hours upon hours in avoidable unhealthy conditions. No child should have to suffer sitting in an unhealthy school building for the majority of their days. Layer on top of that, children that have to come into school with an already weakened immune system in which mold will attack immediately. Mold toxicity can cause respiratory tract health problems and allergic reactions. It can cause thyroid issues, hormone problems, immune response issues, and quite possibly the most important to Montgomery County, mold can actually cause mental health issues. We are at an all-time high in this world trying to do all that we can to keep our children healthy and safe, both physically and mentally, and yet nothing is being done on this matter at what is supposed to be ranked as one of the top schools in our nation. Future families entering into this cluster are unaware of the health detriment that is soon to be placed upon them. I'm quite appalled and would expect much better from any county, let alone such a prestigious and well-looked upon one. I look forward to you making the right decision in renovating Thomas Wooten High School in the extremely near future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to associations and organizations, our next speaker is uh, Ria Cheller and uh, Zorawar Singh. Zorawar Singh. It's not on yet, no. Hit the mic. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Felder and members of the board. My name is Ria Chalar. Unfortunately, Zoe couldn't be here today, but I'll be speaking to you. So I serve as one of Wooten High School's Student Government Association co-presidents. As you are aware, Wooten students have had a large presence in Board of Education hearings for the past few years, advocating for renovation and infrastructure improvements for the Wooten building. Students involved in various extracurriculars such as fashion, athletics, and performing arts have expressed the importance of suitable and safe learning environments. So seeing the new possibility of Wooten's renovation being canceled or pushed back past 2029 was shocking and disheartening for the Wooten community to say the least. Today, we stand before you once again as we have consistently over the past decade advocating for the welfare and safety of our students and staff and emphasizing that Wooten's renovation should be a top priority. I trust that everyone on the board here today shares our belief in the right of every child to receive a free, public, and safe education. Unfortunately, many persistent conditions within Wooten High School have fallen far below these standards. Our concern goes beyond mere aesthetics. It's about having a safe and equal learning environment for all. 
An important step in understanding the importance of our building's renovation is to have a conversation with any Wooten student and understand how the numerous pressing issues within our school impact our daily lives. Whether it's bathrooms with leaking faucets, filthy or missing ceiling panels, evident mold in lower level classrooms, or an auditorium with seats so worn they can no longer be used. Wooten was supposed to receive an auditorium renovation years ago, complete with new seats and new microphones, but that plan was canceled due to our renovation being within a few years. However, by continuing to push back our renovation to years later than previously planned, the auditorium renovation remains canceled and our issues of broken mic systems, scaffolding, and broken chairs continue to be obstacles to the student body. As the student government responsible for student events, we are severely constrained compared to other county schools with fully functional auditoriums and other areas for hosting events. Just two days ago, a student heard a waterfall sound as he was walking to his first period class and he discovered water flooding out of a classroom doorway into the hallway. The amount of water present was dangerous and an entire hallway was closed off to handle this issue. All classes located in that hallway had to be moved, wasting significant class time. The same day, a student walked into a bathroom on our upstairs floor and heard a crackling sound as she walked. And as she looked down, she noticed floorboards breaking at her feet. Seeing as multiple dangerous building issues occurred in just one singular day at Wooten, it is evident that poor infrastructure can cause serious harms to students and a place a large burden on the building service and security personnel who are forced to handle these issues. One known and arguably most important value of our county is equality. However, the Wooten community feels unfairly left behind as we spend the majority of our days in one of the only two schools in MCPS built before 1970 that hasn't been majorly renovated. Seeing the new possibility of Wooten's renovation being pushed back to past 2029 or being completely canceled is extremely disheartening to our students who have been fighting passionately and consistently for an adequate learning space. As you can see, the Wooten community is here today requesting to be placed as a priority and ready to share our experiences and work with you. Board members and Dr. Felder, I encourage you to look around this room. The students, parents, and staff present today are not advocating for themselves. None of the Wooten students here today will directly benefit from the changes and renovations we are requesting. They're advocating for the students who feel the floorboards cracking under their feet as they walk or those who can't get into a functioning elevator. They're advocating for the students who can't attend a football game with their peers due to the inaccessible stadium. They're advocating for the thousands of future Wooten Patriots. The time is now. I urge you to simply consider this. Will Wooten students be provided a safe and accessible learning environment or must our safety prioritization keep getting pushed back or be completely disregarded? Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kimberly Glassman. Please come forward. Good evening. Dr. Felder and members of the board, my name is Kim Glassman. I serve as Magruder High School's PTSA president and one of three MCC PTA Magruder cluster coordinators. I appreciate the difficulty that MCPS has with respect to the capital improvement budget. I am here to ask that Magruder High School be maintained in the budget and if necessary be delayed rather than shifted to to be determined status. My, history, my testimony tonight is a bit of a history lesson. I feel like that's been a theme with me lately. In June of 2016, the board first approved Magruder to be added to the list of schools to be reassessed for modernization. As of that decision, Magruder had not been assessed since the 90s when I graduated from high school. While there was a building addition in 1994, there has not been a major renovation to the original building since it opened in 1970. In the fiscal year 2020 master plan released in July 1st, 2019, the board wrote, that the Board of Education, Superintendent of Schools, and school community recognize that even well-maintained facilities eventually reach the end of their useful lifespan and require upgrades to the infrastructure building systems to address programmatic needs. It was in this capital improvement plan that Magruder was identified as one of the schools in need of a major capital project. In the next fiscal year, we were slated for a 2027 major capital improvement project, and that is when the delays began. 
In the fiscal year 2023 master plan, we were shifted from a 2027 date to a completion date of 2029. It is now March of 2024, and both of the options that have been proposed push Magruder to to be determined status. As cluster coordinator, I will also note that we have uh, proposed removing Mill Creek Town Elementary School's addition altogether, and Mill Creek Town is home to a CES program as well as an elementary school learning center. Our cluster needs to be maintained in the budget. All of these outcomes are unacceptable for Magruder High School and the Magruder Cluster. This is my fourth and final year as Magruder Cluster Coordinator. Every year in July, I present an Excel spreadsheet to MCPS with all of the projects that our principals have recommended. Every year, the Magruder High School projects are denied. Why? Because there is a major capital improvement planned for 2027 and then for 2029. A few weeks ago, each of you received over 40 emails from Magruder students outlining the needs for our building. Each of these identified needs have gone unaddressed for years because of the promise of this 2027 and then 2029 major capital improvement. If MCPS is going to continually delay or de remove our school from the capital improvement plan, then at the very least we need to maintain the building in the meantime. There are a list of projects that have been denied over recent years in the name of this upcoming project. Our exterior and parking lots are extremely poorly lit. It is very dangerous if you have ever left Magruder High School after sunset. It is a danger to our students, staff, parents, and community. The stadium steps have a rock-filled path to the stands on the visitor side that are steep and hazardous. This needs to be addressed immediately. We have little camera coverage for the stadium field in the back side of the building. We also do not have the benefit of turf fields that some of our modernized schools have which puts us at a competitive disadvantage compared to our other competitors. I believe you received student, student emails from our field hockey players. My daughter is one of them. The auditorium lighting and sound needs to be upgraded and replaced. Our musical was last weekend and is this weekend. Please go see The Little Mermaid. In the middle of singing, the students' mics go out. Mm. And someone has to go out and bring a replacement microphone. This might not sound important, but when you've been rehearsing and put your heart and soul into your performance, you deserve to be heard. The hallway lockers are broken and falling apart. The restrooms are disgusting, and quite frankly, students avoid them at all costs. The locker rooms are in poor shape. The roof leaks, and there is mold throughout the building. If you had the opportunity to see our student Justin testify before the county council, he brought pictures. I again want to acknowledge that this is a tough budgetary cycle. The current class of 2029, when the original uh, renovation was to be completed in the most recent SIP, are our current seventh graders, like my son. They were in first grade when MCPS first proposed that Magruder High School be, be repaired. They will never see a renovated Magruder High School if we are not returned to the capital improvement project. I ask that MCPS please do so. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Emily Beckman. Please come forward. Thank you. Uh, President Silvestre, uh, Superintendent Felder, members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to testify tonight. My name is Emily Beckman, and I am honored to testify on behalf of the Walter Johnson Cluster of PTAs. The Walter Johnson Cluster of PTAs is extremely troubled by the last-minute proposal to further fracture completion of the Woodward High School construction project by relegating construction of the auditorium to a separate third phase of construction. Why have costs increased for the Woodward project? Because splitting construction into multiple phases is inherently more expensive. The Walter Johnson cluster consistently supported the two-phase construction plan for Woodward, recognizing that the need to provide a holding space for Northwood High School outweighed these inevitable cost increases and despite the cost to our community of an additional two and now three years of severe overcrowding at Walter Johnson High School. Walter Johnson High School was 688 students over capacity based on the September numbers of this year. The newest projections for next year received by the school administration recently put that number at 777 students over capacity. We are outraged to now learn that Woodward High School, when it does open, may not be built with the full amenities available at every other Montgomery County high school. 
We have attended numerous architectural and construction meeting, planning meetings for Woodward since 2019. And since 2019, these meetings have focused in part on providing facilities appropriate to housing a performing arts magnet program. When we have asked why the Performing Arts Magnet Program has not been presented to the board for approval, we have been told that placement of a magnet program does not require board approval. It would be short-sighted and self-defeating to open a Performing Arts Magnet Program at a school with theater facilities inferior to each currently existing Montgomery County Public High School. We were all here just a few years ago, listening to the Loiterman Middle School community persuasively testify that a performing arts magnet middle school needed a theater, even though that is not a standard amenity for MCPS middle schools. It is equally obvious that a high school performing arts magnet program requires an auditorium for artistic performances. But an auditorium is a necessary facility for a high school, whether or not it houses a performing arts magnet program. Fall plays, spring musicals, choral, orchestra, and band concerts are important curricular and extracurricular offerings of every Montgomery County High School. In April, WJ will use its auditorium to hold a student production of Les Mis. I invite you all to come. Where will Woodward High School hold its musical? At the spring concert, which I also invite you to attend at WJ, there's a tradition for seniors to sing their final numbers in tribute to their parents, teachers, and each other in the auditorium. It is always a standing room only event. Where will Woodward singers and artists develop similar tra traditions? Of course, high school auditoriums are not only used for artistic productions, they are also used for a wide range of assemblies, testing, parent meetings, orientations, information nights, and community events. High school auditoriums are often the only venue large enough for fifth grade promotion ceremonies and middle school seasonal concerts, all of which are also currently hosted at the WJ Auditorium for our feeder schools. There were good reasons for splitting the construction of Woodward High School into two phases, despite the inevitable added costs of phased construction. There are not good reasons to further splinter the Woodward project into an additional phase three. We understand that difficult choices need to be made in difficult budget years, but to deprive the future Woodward <coughs> students of the facilities enjoyed by every other school is wrong. If you vote to move the required facilities at Woodward to a new phase three, you are voting to open Woodward High School without an auditorium and backing away from the longstanding commitment that Woodward High School would be built with facilities equal to those of every other Montgomery County High School. I would also add that if we did not watch your work session meetings on streaming online, we would not know of this change. There has been no communication with the community by MCPS regarding this change or in advance of proposing this change, and the most recent community meeting scheduled for Woodward at the end of February was canceled. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Samit Sharma. Please come forward. Good evening, board members. My name is Sumit Sharma. Junwa Lu and I are the Wooden Cluster Coordinators. So I stand again before you for the third time in five months. And the Wooden Cluster community here has packed this room every year for the past several years, vigorously advocating for the critical um, capital improvement needs of our schools. However, it seems to us that we're not making any progress. Instead, we're going backwards for some reason. Just to refresh the timeline, Wooden was long ago approved for a major capital improvements project to be completed in 2019, which was then repeatedly delayed. After years of waiting and watching other schools pass us up, um, the superintendent recommended a major improvement uh, at Wooden with a completion date of 2029. Meanwhile, Cold Spring Elementary was also recommended for a major capital improvement project and feasibility study. These were basically a done deal pending county council approval. However, both are now seriously in doubt. Removal of the Wooden um, project from the CIP is a major devastating blow to the Wooden cluster community. And to add insult to injury, there are now apparently discussions within the board of uh, 
completely closing down Cold Spring. Not sure how that happened. This is not the response that our community anticipated to many years of genuine, vigorous advocacy for our kids. This is the reason why the CIP process is broken, leaving a, la you know, a loss of trust. Also remember, these are your constituents, right? We therefore again request that the initially recommended major CIP for Wooten remain on track for a 2029 completion date, and that Cold Spring remain in the CIP, and to shut down any talks or discussions of shutting down Cold Spring. We realize that construction costs continue to be high and elevated, and there will always be fiscal constraints. But there is no clear argument for a major renovation, as there is for Wooten, and no clear example of preserving excellence, as there is at Cold Spring. And besides, our schools have waited long enough and been pushed aside for long enough. We've said this over and over and over again, but the time for Wooden really is now. In fact, it has passed. We have waited and watched other schools receive priority for long enough. And I think you know that if Wooden is removed from the CIP um, and doesn't remain on track for a 2029 completion, it likely it will not return to the CIP for many, many years to follow. I'm not going to list today the dozens of CIP needs at Wooden. You know, we've, we've listed this literally countless of times in the past. You've heard this from students you know, earlier tonight. I would instead like to you know, remind you that all of these concerns have severe you know, negative mental um, and health consequences on our students. Instead, I would like you please to step back and um, consider the significant consequences of your actions or rather inactions on our community, on MCPS, and on Montgomery County overall. Has the board really considered the impact of further delaying the CIP at Wooden or possibly shutting down Cold Spring? Consequences such as, you know, on our st students, the communities that they're part of. Consequences on the high level of educational excellence and achievement at these schools and at all of our schools. Reduced enrollment at MCPS, an exodus of residents outside of Montgomery County, and a further depletion of the county's tax revenue space, further reducing our budget. Yes, these are realistic outcomes when a district has a pattern of choosing not to foster and support the needs of its communities. Um, you know, as, as folks have been saying, and as you know, Wooden is consistently ranked as one of the top three to five high schools in the county. Cold Spring has several decades of, you know, the highest academic and teaching reputation and hosts a valuable, gifted, and talented center. You would think that a school district, dear superintendent, who says, you know, that strives for excellence would choose to foster and nurture this and provide those schools and the students with the tools that they need rather than push them aside because of their excellence. Um, with respect to Cold Spring, you have three highly diverse communities which have been highly invested in the school for decades. The relationship is not something you can easily break apart, and you cannot restore it simply by changing boundary lines. And yes, we can, we, we're happy to debate future enrollment projections. Um, we therefore ask for a full commitment to, to funding our projects. Lastly, since you are in a position to do something, we kindly ask each board member tonight to confirm two things, whether or not you would vote for Wooten CIP's restore, and w whether or not you, uh, whether or not a uh, closure of Cold Spring really is an option on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Nicholas Basie. Please come forward. Good evening. I'm Nicholas Bassey, Paint Branch Cluster Coordinator for the Montgomery County Council of Parent Teacher Associations. We're home to approximately 7,700 students from across nine vibrant schools, Paint Branch High School and the eight elementary and middle schools feeding into it. I'm here today to focus on two, Burtonsville Elementary School and Benjamin Banneker Middle School. The Burtonsville mm -hmm. Elementary School community is tired. Tired of overcrowding, tired of bus loop issues, tired of problems associated with being located in an industrial zone, tired of conditions that are not conducive to the processes of teaching or learning, tired of the disappointment and whiplash of being included in the CIP only to disappear mysteriously at a future point, tired of inequity and tired of being overlooked. We're tired also of losing faith, 
faith in the county council and MCPS and this body because the decision has been made yet again to invest in, instead in a different or less diverse part of our community. But despite this tiredness and disappointment, we still have hope. We have hope in the renderings of the elementary school that we've seen. We have hope that parts of the East County that have been left to crumble are finally being seen as worth reinvestment. We have hoped that this group and MCPS will together demonstrate that our children are just as worthy of functional modern school environments as those elsewhere in our county. Burtonsville opened in 1952, and it was last renovated in 1993, 31 years ago. A feasibility study recommended an addition more than 10 years ago. This project, despite discussions with architects and consultations with the school community, failed to break ground. As I've mentioned during previous testimony, in the decade plus since, their space crisis has only worsened steadily. This school year, the school has about 630 students, which is 100 plus over the school's capacity. Their cafeteria fits only one grade level at a time, resulting in six lunch periods. Uh, and it's also their only gathering space, but because it hosts lunch from 1040 in the morning until 210 in the afternoon, it's generally unavailable for enrichment activities and assemblies. This lunch schedule also creates staffing issues. Paraeducators are forced to trade instructional time for lunch duty, and we believe that this was a key factor in our rating slippage on the Maryland State Report Card from four to three stars. Students and teachers need a new Burtonsville Elementary School now, not a shift yet again to the unpredictable later years of the CIP. Now, in a similar vein, walking the whole halls of Benjamin Banneker Middle School reveals also myriad age-related CIP issues apparently unrepairable leaks in the roof, quasi-functional water heaters, frequent, very frequent HVAC outages, regular plumbing issues including flooding and sewage backups, buckling basement walls, and the list goes on and on. The building's age creates myriad safety issues as well. The cafeteria, for example, has a multi-level design that uh, causes accidents, and it's too small. It has multiple interior classrooms with inadequate emergency exits, and the corridors, especially on the lower level, are too narrow for the almost 800 students that have to transit them at the same time. The school was built in 1974, 50 years ago, and has not been renovated or modernized since. It was approved for a feasibility study for a major capital project in the last CIP, but we've not seen any evidence or progress toward that end. This must proceed without further delay. We ask that you not forget about these stark facilities challenges. The age of these schools, these two schools, creates plumbing, security, space, technology, and numerous other challenges that make teaching and learning much more difficult than necessary at both schools. Please work with us to address these challenges by prioritizing our request and viewing them through an equity lens. We thank you in advance for your time, your attention, and your action for the Burtonsville Elementary and Benjamin Banneker Middle School communities without delay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ben Lewis. Please come forward. Good evening. Um, my name is Ben Lewis, Burtonsville Elementary School PTA president. As you know, the non-recommended reductions for the CIP includes a potential two-year delay uh, for the construction of a new Burtonsville Elementary. Uh, disappointed, frustrated, demoralized. Those are some of the few words that describe our current feelings in our community. Burtonsville was approved for a building addition almost 10 years ago. This project, despite having a completed feasibility study, named architect, consultants, uh, in consultation with the administration and staff, failed to break ground. The school addition and renovation continued to be included, then removed, then included, then removed out of the CIP budgets for several years after. The decision to, to include Burtonsville in the, B, in the list B of the non-recommended reductions is especially cruel. Given the amount of effort, collaboration, and engagement that has occurred between MCPS, school administration, and the Burtonsville community in the past uh, recent few years. Our administration has actively participated in the design process. Our community has met several times with the design team to go over building design concepts and the impacts to the community. Even school renderings were released. I hope you guys would see them on the website, which illustrated renewed hope for a better experience for our kids and community. It would be devastating to have this stripped from our community again. While the school anxiously awaits a new building, the present day challenges remain. A combined cafeteria and all purpose room that doesn't meet the present day needs for lunches or school assemblies, added responsibilities for paraeducators to cover extra lunch periods instead of being in the classroom, a direct impact on student learning. 
and safety concerns for arrival and dismissal of traffic. I personally spend a few days a week uh, during arrival and dismissal making sure kids get out of their cars safely and get uh, to, to their cars safely. Um, over the past several years, our PTA has worked tirelessly to advocate on behalf of our school and community. We've participated, we partnered with MCPS and the County Council to make this new school a reality with hopes of reestablishing the community's trust in MCPS and the county investment in Burtonsville and the East County as a whole. The decision to delay this project would erode all of the trust equity that the county has earned and would validate the common adage of Montgomery County just doesn't care about East County. We request that the Board of Education collaborate with the County Council to fund the construction costs for new Burtonsville Elementary School at the proposed Northeast Consortium Elementary School number 17 site, including the Board of Education requested appropriation for the construction cost increases and one year acceleration for the completion date of August 2026. Uh, the Burtonsville community has waited patiently for over a decade. Please work with us to make this dream a reality. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Stephanie Fitz. Please come forward. Good evening. I'm the Clint Sorcher Cluster Coordinator. My testimony tonight is actually not on specifics, is not on the specifics of potentially forthcoming large boundary study, nor on which students from the QO cluster might be zoned for which school, nor actually on budget. Instead, my testimony is on communication and also on using this moment as we consider building new high schools, expanding current high schools, and reevaluating boundary alignments as an opportunity to improve more students' actual access to highly desirable academic offerings in MCPS. When thinking about communication, I would like MCPS to consider the types of information and answers to common questions it can give parents in advance of any boundary studies or school construction. In my cluster, one of the questions I am asked most frequently when we talk about Crown High School is if students will be grandfathered into their current school. Will rising seniors be allowed to stay at their high school? What about juniors? What about siblings? Parents also want to know in very simple language what year is Crown actually planned to open? They're hearing a lot of conflicting information. While this is not my area, I've also heard from PTA contacts that students currently, I think at Damascus, wanted to know maybe they're going to have to go virtual. So I'll get to this. There's rumors. We need communication like now. I think these types of questions can and should be answered right away. MCPS needs to find out what parents are worried about that actually can be answered right away. So they can assuage as much worry as possible and also get ahead of possible misinformation and rumors. Currently the slides from the February 27th work session are available not only through MCPS but also have been shared on social media sites. What this means is parents not as deeply involved in understanding the process leading into this potential boundary study are receiving bits and pieces of information often secondhand. It would be great for parents to receive clear, timely information from MCPS just on the process. I also urge MCPS to communicate promptly to parents once the scope of the boundary study is determined. Currently in my cluster, parents whose kids live in physical proximity to Crown High School are aware their children may attend Crown, and they're paying attention. If a larger boundary study were to occur, parents need to know potentially students currently slotted 10 QO might end up at a different high school altogether. So these parents, too, can be paying attention. Sadly, right now, parents sometimes feel MCPS has a habit of hiding processes and information. By being transparent and proactively communicative around what can be said now, what is known, what are the known knowns? Tell us. That, I think, can really help build back trust so this doesn't seem like a um, mysterious process, which is how it seems now. My next area is one of hope. I hope that MCPS will use this moment of high school planning to explore what curriculum is offered at what schools with an eye to expanding access to already successful academic programs currently housed at limited locations. When I speak to current QO cluster parents who think their childs might go to Crown, what they really want to know is about the quality of the academics. What will be offered there? Will there be APs? Will there be IBs? Will there be special programs? I would hope as much care would go into determining the curriculum and academic offerings of each high school as do the construction of the schools and the geography of the students that will attend. 
If a large-scale boundary study is to occur, it makes sense to pair that with a study of the unique offerings at various high schools and MCPS to see how these programs might be expanded to allow more students access. For instance, Poolsville High School currently is the only school offering global ecology program. This popular program could be reproduced at additional high schools so that more students would have access. Northwest High School has Ulysses program, Wheaton has biomedical program, Montgomery Bear has communication arts program, and so on. While some of these types of programs are open to students in other geographies through an application process, the reality of transportation logistics means that many students simply cannot access programs even if admitted. Other of these programs are open only to students at that particular school, again, limiting access. What I hope is in this period of planning, MCPS will examine what offerings are flourishing, but only accessible to a very limited number of students, and imagine how these programs could be expanded. We don't necessarily have to recreate every single wheel. MCPS is actually doing some things wonderfully and fabulously, and students and parents want access. So that is what I would really urge, is look at what is going on that's really good and really popular, but we can't get it. We can't get to it. If you could bring that to more schools, that would make a huge difference. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Brian Rabin. Please come forward. You forgot your phone. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Felder and Board of Education. My name is Brian Rabin, and I serve as the Wooten PTSA president. I'm very disheartened about the unprecedented reductions in the six-year CIP during fiscal years 2025 through 2028. As you know, Wooten High School has been waiting for many years to be renovated. The Wooten High School modernization project was first added to the CIP in 2009 with a completion date of 2018. We were excited and energized when MCPS held the feasibility study meetings at Wooten in 2015, believing that the renovation was on track to be completed. Little did we know at the time that the completion date would continually be pushed back year after year after year. After MCPS removed the list of schools to be modernized and developed the new policy on renovations and developed the key facility indicators, Wooten was included in the CIP once again to be renovated. Wooten's modernization project was expected to start after the Seneca Valley High School modernization project and before the Poolsville High School project. Interestingly enough, after the Poolsville community renovation was, interestingly enough, after the Poolsville community organized a coalition and received significant media attention, the Poolsville renovation was moved ahead of Wooten and now Damascus, which was renovated once already in 1978 after Wooten opened, and then Crown, uh, all have been added ahead of Wooten. In 2018, and for many years before that, I testified as Wooten Cluster Coordinator in front of this body that Wooten, after, in 2018, after 49 years, had a literally crumbling infrastructure and that maintaining the infrastructure at Wooten is a daily struggle. Unfortunately, the building is not getting better with age. Five more years have gone by and in the infrastructure continues to break down as you've heard tonight. There are leaks throughout the building, falling ceiling tiles, an old HVAC system that doesn't keep a steady temperature in all rooms, and a lower level that smells like a basement. In fact, as you heard, the school just had another water leak this week. The Board of Education often discusses how much you value equity in our public school system. Equity comes in many forms, such as equity for special education students and students with disabilities to have equal access to all parts of their school facility and equity for students that wouldn't learn in a modern, healthy facility, like most other high schools that provides them with healthy air quality, air, healthy air quality. We have students that are not able to come into our building, as you heard tonight, due to the mold and mildew in the building. We understand that the county council holds the purse strings, but they look to the Board of Education to designate the projects to include in the CIP. Each November, our students and parents testify about the lack of ADA accessibility and the poor conditions of Wooten at the Board of Education CIP hearings. And every February, our students and parents testify at the County Council CIP hearings about the same topics. Again this evening, you have heard from and will hear from Wooten students and parents that continue to be frustrated that the Wooten Modernization Project continues to be pushed out. We will continue to come out to every public hearing and advocate 
for our cluster until our building is renovated. Our Wooten community, including our cluster principals, are incredibly frustrated that the Wooten cluster schools continue to be skipped over for modernizations. We were close with Dufif Elementary School's modernization in 2021, but the Dufif project was pulled two months prior to moving to a holding school, and there was no notification to the principal or community that the project was not moving forward. And now we wonder when Dufif's project will, will move forward now. We were pleased a cold spring was added to the CIP, but now with the latest reductions, the project will be pushed again. Some clusters, including Churchill, Walter Johnson, Richard Montgomery, Rockville, and Whitman, have had every school in their cluster renovated. Our ask to the Board of Education is to make a choice to keep Wooden and Cold Spring on schedule and to reconsider the fate of the Dufif project. On another note, we are very appreciative that $15 million was appropriated for Wooden High School for ADA improvements inside and outside the building, including the shifting of the bus loop to provide a safer driveway in front of our school. Three improvements, these improvements will ensure that our st students with disabilities will have parking access, be able to safely evacuate the building during emergencies, be able to have access to the theater, and disability access to the restrooms. While this is good progress, there's still so much more that is needed for Wooten to have an accessible, safe, and a healthy learning environment for students and faculty. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Kristen Erdheim, please play the video. Dr. Felder and members of the board, my name is Kristen Erdheim and I'm one of the Magruder Cluster Coordinators as well as on the PTA boards at Mill Creek Town Elementary School, Shady Grove Middle School, and Magruder High School. I'm here to request you reconsider the proposed delays of the Magruder High School construction project and the plans to hold off on the consideration of an addition for Mill Creek Town Elementary School. Delays in funding these projects, especially the Magruder construction, which has already been pushed back multiple times, does not change the fact that they are necessary in the immediate future. We simply cannot afford to postpone them further. As our buildings age, the cost to maintain becomes more significant. We have a number of buildings in our area that with proper care and investment can continue to serve our communities well. Repair and or replacing building systems is crucial to keeping these older buildings in usable condition. We have been requesting certain improvements and repairs from Magruder High School for at least the past few CIP cycles. Many of these are even more important because there are also safety issues. These requests include exterior lights. We've requested LED lights in the two main entrances to the school. The main entrances are not adequately lit and pose safety and security risks. We are not asking for lights to be replaced, simply the bulbs. We were told this would be a relatively inexpensive request, yet still nothing has been done to remedy the lighting problems. Stadium steps. The rock-filled path to the stands is steep and hazardous for visiting spectators. We request the addition of a permanent set of steps with handrails to provide a safe point of entry. Security cameras. There is very little coverage of our stadium field and backside of the building. The upper soccer, softball, baseball fields, and other locations are not adequately covered by current monitoring services. We do not have a camera facing the front of the building either. Auditorium lighting and sound needs to be upgraded and replaced. While some lighting was replaced, they only have a three-month lifespan because of the outdated wiring and lighting system. The sound system goes in and out during student performances and must be upgraded. Magruder Drama had two performances of The Little Mermaid last weekend, and many of the actors could not be heard due to ineffective microphones and a speaker system that was malfunctioning. Hall lockers are broken and falling apart. Many of the restrooms need renovations to maintain proper repair. Locker rooms are in extremely poor shape. Roof leaks in several areas resulting in mold, mold throughout the building. Enrollment projections at Mill Creek Town Elementary School indicate that enrollment will exceed capacity by the end of the six-year planning period. A fiscal year 2025 appropriation was requested to begin the planning and design for this addition project, and this project was scheduled to be completed in August 2028. However, the latest recommendations seek to delay all planning funds to fiscal year 2029 with the completion date of to be determined. Students and teachers feel as though they are sitting ducks in the portables, and there is no safety available during instruction, as well as during transitions in and out of the building. The portable, portables often become rodent and insect havens due to changing weather conditions. As a result, they are often faced with mice droppings, ant infestations, bee and hornet hives, in addition to wildlife greeting them at their doors. The HVAC units in the portables are very unpredictable in operation. There have been multiple days where there's been no heat or air conditioning. Due to the lack of ventilation in these units, it causes the space to either be completely freezing or stifling in heat. The windows are also completely flimsy and present weather and safety concerns as well. They can be shimmied from the outside. Lastly, the portables become extremely filthy with dirt, mud, and moisture because there is no secure place for students to wipe their feet. 
Mats outside the doors become wet, frozen, and filthy. They're rarely cleaned, which becomes an added issue. We request that you move Mill Creek Town Elementary School back to the planning stage so the school can receive the addition it needs to eliminate the portable issues and adequately provide space for all of its students in a proper school building. Our cluster understands that the funds necessary to keep these large capital improvement projects on the timeline we desire may not be available, but you cannot continue to ignore the requests that are needed now because our school may be under construction in the next seven or more years. It is simply not feasible to wait years for a project that may or may not happen. The request that these Magruder cluster projects be kept in the most recent CIP budget, but at the very least, the request for repairs and the safety issues we've continually brought forth to the board need to be addressed in a timely manner. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I wanted to give our student uh, the benefit of the doubt. It may have cut her short today. Ms. Stanislaw, would you like to go again? Thank you for your patience. We want to be respectful of our students. Thank you so much for letting me have the opportunity to speak again. My name is Ashi Stanislaus, and I am a junior and the SGA secretary at Thomas S. Wooten High School. After testifying multiple times at the Board of Education and County Council about Wooten's infrastructure and its hazardous conditions, it was very disheartening to hear about the possibility of the renovation date being pushed back again. I am here, and I will continue to show up and advocate until these urgent needs are met. Education is a human right that everyone should have safe access to. In the United States, it's the state's responsibility to guarantee that this right is filled. The fact of the matter is that Wooten is not ADA compliant. When the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, was signed into law, it established the civil right of people with disabilities to live, work, and fully participate in their communities. Public schools are one of America's most prominent public entities, so they are obligated to adhere to basic ADA requirements. Last semester, our school had two bomb threats in less than two months. During our first bomb threat, the special education department needed to be evacuated before everyone else because the exit path for students is not accessible. During the second evacuation, there is no warning, which is usual for an emergency. So they had to be evacuated at the same time as everyone else. The route from their classrooms to the field is very unsafe and hazardous. In the SCB program, there are currently seven students who use wheelchairs with different types of wheels and sizes. While the special education department was trying to evacuate, many wheelchairs got stuck at the exit doors. The tiles on the floor are uneven, the doors are extremely heavy to push open, and the wheelchairs couldn't go over the bump at the frame of the door. Despite the urgency of needing to evacuate the building quickly, I joined a group of students and teachers attempting to, attempting to physically lift the students in their wheelchairs through the doors. This prevented even more students from exiting in a timely manner. As soon as the students got outside, they were met with a steep hill full of cracks and bumps in the pavement. This is an unacceptable risk to both students with disabilities as well as the entire student population in an emergency. In this situation, our students should not have to worry about whether they can escape a bomb due to Wooten's inability to prioritize basic accessible infrastructure. We all deserve to have a safe egress to escape danger and get to safety. Fortunately, in both of these cases, the school was found to be clear. Had this been a real bomb or any other emergency, these students would have been in danger because of the issues. While some ADA compliance modifications are slated for the summer, we need comprehensive care now. By pushing back the renovation date, you are not only putting the current Wooten students in danger, but all future classes. What will happen during the next emergency? This renovation date is not a request, but a safety imperative. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to open it up to my colleagues uh, for board questions or comments, starting with Mrs. Madraski. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think we were making, uh, doing questions necessarily, but I did want to clarify something that was said. Um, um, first of all, communication, really, that's so important, and I know we all know it, but um, sometimes we think we're doing a good job of it, and we're not. I have no idea where the um, concept of Cold Spring being talked about shut down came from, because I've never heard that ever. So I just wanted to clarify so that when people are talking about these things that are all on the same page. Thank you. Oh, 
Okay. We have talked about it. No, we haven't. So just to clarify, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Adams, but the question was about under-enrollment, and Mr. Adams explained to us that the school, beyond being under-enrolled, it needs a renovation because of the design is outdated, it's an open school concept, and that it could also be used for uh, our pre-K expansion. Um, and so I think Mr. Adams said um, that's what our intentions are going forward. I think uh, somebody said something to the effect of, you know, it would be have to be a board decision if, if it ever wanted to close, but the administration's plan is to renovate the school and uh, use it, because it's an open concept, which is out of date, and to use it for uh, pre-K services. Mr. Adams, did I get that right, or you want to correct me? Please do. No, that's, that's correct. Um, the, the plan would be to look at that school again because of the open concept. Uh, but because of the capacity, um, we do have excess capacity in that particular cluster to look at that school um, and bring in uh, additional programming. And that could be countywide programming, that could be program that could serve the specific community, but that would be something that we would walk through and, and better understand as that pro pro project proceeds forward. Thank you. Any comments or questions from um, those who are board members online? No? Okay. Ms. Yang. Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to uh, thank our students for coming out. It's a school, school day night. And, <laughs> and so many of them also mentioned they're juniors and I know how junior year is. So truly, um, your compassion comes through. Uh, like you say, you're not advocating for yourself, mm -hmm. but for the future students. So I deeply appreciate that. And there are a few things I want to clarify. Um, whether a school is slated for renovation, do we keep up with the maintenance of the school? Yes, we, we maintain our maintenance uh, schedule, obviously. But what was referred tonight is some of the uh, systemic improvements, let's say a roof replacement or an HVAC replacement. Many of those projects are state funded um, and when you proceed with a project like that and receive state aid, uh, if that project is for some reason demolished or you remove that work within a 15 year window, we have to give that money back to the state. So it's a, it's a balance of, of obviously when the project is anticipated to move forward and when it's not. I would just say from the Wooten perspective, we did have a meeting on the night and we talked through uh, some of the challenges. We talked about some of these other program budgets that exist that, that, that we could certainly take advantage of moving forward. Um, but both with a Wooten and a Magruder, it does make sense to really understand where we are, um, what the possible timelines would be on those projects, and obviously, uh, if, it, if it makes sense um, to move forward with some of the systemic projects. You've heard about the auditorium work at uh, Magruder. We heard about, again, auditorium work at, at Magruder, or um, at Magruder and Wooten, um, you know, to, to really start to think about should we move forward with those projects, um, because we do have a, a period of time between now and when uh, that project could possibly open. You know, I can certainly understand our students' uh, frustration. Mm -hmm. I know we are constrained by the program physical um, constraint from the state uh, or, or our uh, physical funding from the county council. But if, if it's slated to be done, maybe say three or four years, maybe we can wait. But unfortunately, what has happened is these projects get pushed again, again, further down the road, and then um, the, some of the uh, maintenance will not happen, right? Bigger maintenance will not happen. So this is um, something we need to take a look at. But certainly, I think the broken seats in the auditorium, the lighting outside uh, the Maguda cluster mentioned, the lighting, the poor lighting, those are the, some of the things um, maybe we can, staff member can take a look uh, at now so that we can uh, have some band-aid fixes for now. Um, Another thing I want to check is metal hall door gap. Can staff member take a look at um, Mayor um, Moni Ashton mentioned the door gap as being a safety concern? So if a staff member can check that out. Or do we already know the issue? 
Yes, it's in progress. The, the, okay. the, we understand the issue and, and it involves a, a complete replacement of uh, that front edge door. So okay. that is something that we're, we're working through uh, a design approach and, and certainly we'll communicate with the school about possible options on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, we can continue with our next speaker. Juni Wa Liu, please come forward. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Jun Huan Liu. While I currently, uh, currently serve as one of the Wooten Cluster Coordinators today, I stand before you as a concerned parent of three Wooten students. I urgently request MCPS to prioritize the non-overdue renovation of Thomas S. Wooten High School. To further delay is simply unacceptable. So, I want to um, show a couple of pictures um, here. You can see that's the, those are the bathrooms, some of the bathrooms. Actually, my son Kyle uh, took the picture. Next slide, please. So those are the scenes. You probably already um, saw from another parent's testimony. So those are just a few pictures to show you what's the condition of the Wooten High School. And when my family moved to Wooten Cluster in 2009, we were informed that Wooten High School was scheduled for a rebuild, set to be completed in 2018. My daughter, then a third grader, was excited at the prospect of enjoying a brand new high school. Unfortunately, that excitement has turned into a distant dream as 15 years later, our students still hold on to that same unfulfilled hope. I extend a formal invitation to all board members and the superintendent to experience the typical school day firsthand. It is imperative to grasp the daily challenges our students and teachers face in outdated and deteriorated facilities. Wooten High School, standing for almost 60 years, is one of the only two high schools in the county that has never undergone a major capital improvement. Our students and all of the testimony has, you have, you know, have listed all of the issues in the school. And one thing I want to uh, emphasize is the faulty design of our congested and the narrow front driveway. Presenting a daily safety risk, Numerous instances, including a student suffering a concussion after hitting by a car last year, underscore the urgency of immediate action. We refuse to wait for another tragedy before addressing this critical safety concern. Years of prioritize, prioritizing other projects over Wooten Cluster has led to um, serious condition. We demand a commitment to full funding for our projects through completion and the accelerated timeline. MCPS prides itself on its commitment to equity and inclusion by addressing the concerns of all its communities. We, too, are a very diverse community, as you can see from the students tonight. It's the educational and the welfare needs of our children are just as crucial as others. Thank you. We expect and demand your support in ensuring well-being of our students and the quality of their Thank education. You. Thank you. Our next speakers are Sarah Adler, Sarah Adler Mandelbaum. Hello, my name is Sarah Adler. Could you push the microphone. There's a button underneath. Yeah. Hello, my name is Sarah Adler Mandelbaum. I am the proud parent of a first grader at Cold Spring Elementary School. I'm here today to voice my support for Cold Spring Elementary School, the school's future, and most importantly, the continued academic success of the Cold Screen Elementary School students. By profession, I'm an economics professor and specialize in public economics and behavioral economics. I trained with some of the best education economists in the field. I understand the difficult positions that Montgomery County Public School District and you, as board members, face in determining how to allocate the scarce financial resources across the large district. At its core, the problems our district faces are economics. With any difficult education economics problem, 
we need to think not just about how to divide up the funds, but also include the cost and benefits of these decisions on our students. Rezoning and elementary school closures were recently mentioned in a previous meeting to cut costs across the district. A rational economic analysis must conclude that Cold Springs should not be part of any district closures. According to the research conducted by Matthew Larson, a leading education economist, school closures and student reassignment leads to a significant negative shock to student attendance and academic success. Larson also found that closures have long-run consequences, both lowering the probability of high school graduation and college attendance. Additionally, Engberg et al. found that adverse effects that displaced students face in academic performance and attendance can be minimized when students move to schools that are higher performing. Cold Spring is rated by US News and World Reports as the number one ranked elementary school in the district, as well as number one in the state. The students at Cold Spring excel by every measure. 77% of students scored at or above the proficient level for math, and 68% have scored above or at level for reading. Based on the published education economics research, if Cold Spring were to close in the district rezoning process, the Cold Spring elementary students would face a significant negative impact on their academic performance and long-term educational success. If rezoning and closures must occur, Cold Spring Elementary School would be a great candidate for receiving any displaced students. Switching schools to attend a highly ranked elementary school like Cold Spring would minimize the negative effects on student outcomes. Every year, Cold Spring Elementary welcomes new students into our school through the fourth and fifth grade Center for Enriched Studies. These students and their families are quickly welcomed into our school community. We would do the same with any displaced families. Board of Education members, please continue to keep Cold Spring Elementary School open and support the academic success of our students. Please give our students an optimal learning environment by keeping Cold Spring Elementary and Wooten High School in the Capital Improvements Program with established dates. Hear the voices of other Cold Spring and Wooten parents and our community in their Thank concern you. for our school. Thank you. Our next speaker is Marissa Marinos. Please come forward. Good evening, Dr. Felder, members of the Board of Education. Thank you for hosting us today. My name is Marissa Marinos, and I'm the mom of two Cold Spring Elementary School students, an aunt of a Wooten High School student, attorney, a mediator, a Girl Scout troop leader, and president-elect of the Cold Spring PTA. I'm part of the community of thoughtful leaders for our amazing children. I am here today to ask that you help us in maintaining excellence for our children by keeping Cold Spring and Wooten on the capital improvement plan. I was disappointed to see the re recent video remarks of a board member hinting at a potential closing of Cold Spring. My husband and I are both professionals and selected our home based on the amazing school. I urge you to stop by one day and see the community. It is a warm, diverse neighborhood school with high expectations for staff, students, and the PTA. As I am sure the Board of Education was as proud as the PTA board to hear that US News and World Report recently ranked our school the number one elementary school in the state. Our school is aging and requires repairs, which are not new to this board or our community, such as replacing carpeting, maintaining the school to prevent leaks, water filters, reduction of noise in the rooms, and adding shelter in place locations. I'm confident that repairs can be done in some sort of mutually agreeable manner and in coordination with the community as needed while keeping the school open, the community intact, and the students flourishing. As an aunt of a Wooten student um, and the bocce team state champion player, <laughs> we have traveled to various county schools for games. With each visit, the high schoolers, children, and parents would comment on all the other schools that seemed nicer than theirs. Wooten students tell me that they go home to use the bathrooms because they are so disgusting with leaking ceilings, HVAC issues, door issues, and asbestos, as really the amazing students have articulated tonight. I am confident that we can find a way to improve Wooten and also make the high school a priority on the CIP. There is a rumor circulating that Cold Spring and Wooten are off of the CIP due to the high student achievement and the diversity of the students. Diversity seems like an impermissible and illegal basis to make decisions upon. Our children's highest academic achievement with community support is to be applauded and is the goal. 
achievement is unrelated and should also not be a factor in prioritizing the fundamental needs of clean air, clean water, safety, and a roof that doesn't leak. I'm a bureaucrat and realize the complexity of budgets, priorities, strategic plans such as the CIP. These are not new issues. As a county, we have the money and ability to be better. As a community, we are here to find mutually agreeable solutions. We are here to request that we all maintain excellence and support our children by keeping Cold Spring and Rootin on the CIP. Again, I ask that you renovate Cold Spring by keeping it open. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Nicholas Federico. Please come forward. Good evening, MCBS Board of Education. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. My name is Nicholas Federico, and I'm here this evening to advocate on behalf of my kindergartner who attends Cold Spring Elementary School and to advocate for my local community high school, Wooten High School. While neither of the options discussed this evening address or remedy the much needed deferred interim maintenance or the aging facilities facing many schools in Wooten Cluster. Option B is the only option that maintains planning funds for Cold Spring Capital Projects, but also includes Wooten High School planning funds, delaying them to 2029 instead of removing them completely. My daughter is currently a kindergartner at Cold Spring, so I've witnessed firsthand the incredible educational experience that Cold Spring has to offer as the number one elementary school in Maryland. At the same time, I've witnessed the challenges posed by the aging Cold Spring building, a facility built in 1972 without a major renovation, which does not include floor to ceiling walls, dividing classrooms, often leaks during heavy rains, and currently has lead pipes for most of its drinking water fountains. I won't go into the obvious security and safety concerns posed by a school that lacks floor to ceiling walls because we've already heard testimony about that previously. I understand that MTPS is currently facing a budget shortfall for its CIP projects and often has to make difficult decisions about which projects to fund and which to postpone, but Cold Spring Elementary, Wooten High School, and Wooten Cluster have been pushed to the bottom of the priority list for far too long. Instead of championing and supporting the Cold Spring Wooten community schools, which span Potomac, North Potomac, and Rockville, and providing these schools with the needed interim repairs and necessary long-term facility upgrades, this board has made one broken promise after another. Cold Spring CIP history goes back to at least 2014 when I moved to Potomac, when it was slated for renovation with a completion date of August 2019. Since then, Cold Spring's place on the CIP has been repeatedly delayed and postponed. We've waited patiently for our turn while every other Potomac elementary school has now been renovated. In 2014, Cold Spring was ranked number one as the most requiring modernization due to its aging facilities when using the MCPS FACT methodology. Then MCPS changed all the fact requirements to focus more heavily on farms rates and over-enrolled schools. So our school fell even further down the list. But do not misunderstand, despite what MCPS demographics may say, we are a diverse and vibrant multicultural community. I encourage the board to work with our administration and our PTA on how best to address these dire facility issues and also to learn more about what makes a successful school like Cold Spring Tick so that other schools can emulate us. While our facilities may be aging and long overdue for replacement, that does not mean the school should be closed or these issues should be ignored. We have built an incredible community here and I would welcome the attention and support of this board. I support my local community and so I support Cold Spring and Wooten High School. Please consider supporting them both and providing them with their rightful place on the CIP but also addressing these dire interim maintenance issues. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Elizabeth Senzone. Please come forward. Good evening, thank you for your time. My name is Elizabeth Sanzone, and I'm the proud mom of uh, three children, a first grader, third grader, fifth grader, in the Montgomery County Schools, all currently at Cold Spring Elementary. I am personally very deeply invested in our school and our community. We moved here during the global pandemic from California. I realize that you have many constraints and factors to consider when you decide how and where to allocate money. You have a very, very difficult job. That said, in regard to the agenda today, I ask the board to include Wooten High School and Cold Spring Elementary in the CIP. The needs of Cold Spring are reasonable. New cafeteria tables, new carpet, classroom dividers, a new water fountain given unhealthy detected levels of lead, basic needs of a school. Cold Spring is an amazing school, the type of school that our school board should be most proud of and protect. 
Cold Spring is exactly the type of school that MCPS is known for and strives for. Academic excellence, a wonderful principal who is so passionate about her students and staff. Teachers and families that work together every step of the way and ranked number one elementary school in the state by US News and World Report. When we, uh, my family moved here during the pandemic, we had no idea where we were moving, what was gonna happen, and I am so grateful that we found our little school in our community. We hope it remains the future and literal center of our neighborhoods and community. In our world, there are insurmountable challenges and many ideas promising to solve them, and I find myself anchoring to our community and our schools and the basic needs that make them run and operate well. Cold Spring is a community that gives me tremendous hope for the future. It's a place where people from all walks of life and backgrounds work hard and contribute to the betterment of all the students that go there. Naturally, the decisions you make today and in the future impact us very personally. Please support Cold Spring and Moon High School in the upcoming CIP. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Reginald Harris. Please come forward. Thank you. Where's this button that I press? Oh, it's on. OK, great. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Reggie Harris, and I have two children currently at Cold Spring Elementary School. I'm here to address the concerning suggestion that was mentioned at a recent board meeting of closing down Cold Spring. Dispersing students to other schools may seem like a pragmatic solution given the building infrastructure issues that we're facing, but it does risk disrupting the close-knit community the school has already built. Our school is more than just a place of education. It's a vibrant hub with extensive parent and community engagement fostering a sense of belonging that you wouldn't be replicated anywhere else by scattering our student body. I urge you to simply come and visit the school so you can see for yourself. We've got a unique synergy between the teachers, administrators, the students, and the families. It's this harmony that contributes to the exceptional academic achievements that we've been able to attain, which makes us one of the top performing schools in the entire state. In the aftermath of the pandemic, maintaining stability for our kids is crucial, and this man and dismantling a successful academic environment is counterintuitive. In addition, the school's location allows children from surrounding neighborhoods to walk to school, aligning with our collective responsibility towards environmental sustainability and climate change concerns. Prioritizing walkability promotes a healthier lifestyle. It reduces carbon footprint associated with bus commutes, aligning with our modern values. Closing down a high achieving school contradicts the goal of providing quality education. Instead, we should focus on renovating and modernizing our school to meet the current design expectations and its needs. Improving our outdated infrastructure will preserve the irreplaceable character of our educational community and ensure that the students can benefit from the exceptional learning environment that we've already cultivated. Rather than trying to shut us down, I hope that you'll appreciate the invaluable community bonds that our school has fostered. Acknowledge our students' success despite the physical infrastructure challenges that you've heard about today, and recognize the importance of maintaining a top performing educational institution. Closing our school is not only disruptive, but it's a missed opportunity to invest in the future of MCPS's educational excellence. I urge the board to pursue renovation over closure and to keep our school doors open for the benefit of current and future generations. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Noreen Cordier. Please come forward. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Noreen Kather, and I'm a graduate from Paint Branch High School. I'm a long-term resident of Montgomery County. I'm the mother of four wonderful children, and my dedication to this community runs deep. Today, I stand here to lend my unwavering support to our cluster for Wooten and for Cold Spring. I, I do not support either option. Cold Spring and Wooten must stay in the CIP, and I want you to allow to me to introduce my why and my children. My eldest is a freshman at Wooten. He will graduate in 2027. Unfortunately, he will never experience a newly built high school. My second child is currently a sixth grader at Cavan John. <laughs> And um, he's a projected graduation date of 2030. Maybe he'll see a new high school. Um, 
perhaps. Um, and then there are my two youngest ones who are both at Cold Spring, my kindergartner and my third grader, who are uh, members of the graduating class of 2033 and 2036. I hope that they'll have a new high school. I hope they'll have a new high school way before then. Um, and these, all these questions weigh heavily on my mind. Are we considering the real impact of delaying the construction, particularly on these young lives? Our children deserve nothing but the best education, yet we have found ourselves asking why we can't receive it. Let us not forget the futures we are shaping with each decision we make. It's imperative that we prioritize the needs of our students and provide them with the resources and facilities that they deserve. Wooten High School stands as an exemplary institution within our community, offering unparalleled benefits to our students. Um, as a parent of a student enrolled in the special AOIT program, I'm filled with the curiosity about the possibilities of a state-of-the-art facilities and what it could offer to our students. Despite being recognized as one of the top high schools in the country, it's disheartening to witness our students are having to make do with inaccurate facilities. As a parent, I can't help but yearn for better conditions for our children, especially when they're left eating lunch in the hallway, sitting on the floor in the crowded hallways along with their friends. Ensuring Wooten remains on track and Cold Springs with the current timeline despite the numerous delays is critical. Now let's talk about Cold Spring. Have you visited our school? I invite you to come and see Cold Springs yourself. Principal Hambrick and I would be delighted to give you a tour of our facilities. Additionally, attending one of our community or school events, would, you are most welcome to come. Our, stat, our community is made of a diverse number of students, parents, and staff. My bottom line is that we cannot afford to delay the pushback or be placed on another list or be told to be determined status. The time for construction is now. I would also appreciate an update on Cold Springs, possible it was supposed to be determined to be in the feasibility study. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our final speaker is Quem Okeke. Please come forward. Quem Okeke? No? Okay. If um, Board members, as we conclude, if anyone has any questions or comments, please uh, turn on your lights. And K-E-M. Oh, forgive me if I mispronounce your name. Good evening. I want to say, first of all, thank you for being here. And as every student has come up here to talk, every parent, every representative, I watch in your face the sincerity just to listen. And I feel because you're parents yourself, um, aunts, uncles, so we do know you hear us, so we want to thank you for the time that you're spending to listen to us. It's been um, really hard to have my daughter come back home and tell me things that she has to deal with, particularly when she had her knee pop and uh, navigating school was really hard. And every time she came home, she said, Mom, you don't understand. I have to walk a long ways to get to class. Um, why can't you take the elevator? It doesn't work. Uh, so I think sometimes these kids are so resilient, they actually put up with things they don't even tell the parents until it's really bad and dire. So I really urge you to hear these kids in all you've heard, in all the years, they still did the best they could and they are still maintaining the excellence, as you've heard other parents talk about. It means a lot. I was born in Pittsburgh, but I grew up in Nigeria. And coming from a third world country, when I saw the pictures and had to go in there myself to see this as the African-American parent liaison at Wooden High, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because even back in Nigeria, where I went to school, they have updated my high school and it cannot look better than the one my daughter will go to. I also have a ninth grader. I have a fifth grader. We are invested. I just want you to hear that no matter the challenging decisions you have to make, we want to make them with you. We don't want to be selfish and think that we should be on the list and some other schools should be out of the list. I hope you don't hear that. 
We're saying, what else can we do? What grants can we apply for? Do we need to go to Capitol Hill? Do we need to talk to Congress? Whatever wild ideas we come up with, but just um, help us figure out that outside the box solutions as opposed to coming up with solutions that really hurt um, because when it's your child, you're passionate, you do anything for your child, and that's why we're here sharing this with you. So I just want to say thank you. On, my, on, on behalf of all the parents here, on behalf of all the students here, both for Wooten, both for all the schools that you've heard about, I just want to say to you, we want to support the best way we can. One more thing I want to add is that sometimes the public-private sector relationship, which we often may overlook, can also support. We just had a recent um, news about grants being given to students in college to have free tuition. These things do happen, but it happens when people like you in power also see it as important to reach out and engage and say, we will keep trying until we have no other choice. So thank you so much for your time. I spoke from my heart, and I hope you feel it too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If any uh, board members have any comments or questions, please turn your light on. If not, um, I want to thank everyone for coming to testify tonight um, from all the clusters, uh, and of course, call, uh, our Wooten cluster representatives for staying here for the entire time and for turning out. Of course, you, you told us that you understand that you were part of the superintendent's um, CIP program. Um, and uh, you told us that you understand that you know our funders have told us that we don't have enough money to fund the full CIP, and so we've had to make some difficult decisions. But um, uh, you know we are we are committed to continue to advocate and fight for the needs of our students. Right now, it is in the hands of the county council, um, as Mr. Adams reminds us. You know we need to invest in economic development in this county so that our county funders can have the resources to fully fund our schools. Um, and so with that, I want to thank you and uh, ask Dr. Felder if she has any closing remarks. Sure. There we go. So I, too, want to say thank you uh, to everyone, especially to our students, mm -hmm. um, for their very informative and um, input and in advocacy. Um, your participation tonight is greatly appreciated, and I heard you. So thank you. So thank you so much for coming out tonight, Ms. Can I, yes. Yeah, can I make a request? Because I did take a tour of Cold Spring Elementary School not very long ago. And I think one of the parents mentioned about their cafeteria. Um, I did see some tables that wasn't able to fold and that you can't move it because once you move it, it's not going to be function. So can someone please check out um, the tables at Cold Spring Cafeteria? Thank you. thank you, Ms. Yang, and again, thank you for everyone for coming uh, to testify tonight. Please drive safely, and with that, we are concluded.